Today, I start with an introduction to descriptive statistics. This video will help you understand the basic statistics terminology, many of which you may encounter in daily life whether reading the newspaper, analyzing sports stats, or even just trying to make sense of your monthly budget. We'll explore key concepts like measures of central tendency, measures of variability, frequency distributions, and various graphical representations as well as the measures of association which will help you interpret and utilize data effectively. Well, as we know, statistics play an important role in virtually every aspect of our lives from scientific research and healthcare to business analytics and social sciences. They provide a crucial framework for summarizing organizing and visualizing data which allows us to extract key characteristics and patterns from even the most complex datasets. This course will concentrate on the fundamental concepts and techniques of descriptive statistics. Let's start with the types of data and the measurement levels. In statistics, data is primarily gathered and organized into two distinct formats, categorical and numerical data. Categorical data is often referred to as qualitative data because it represents qualities or characteristics, rather than numerical quantities of data. It consists of labels or names where each label or name represents a distinct category or group. Let's consider the following example where a survey was conducted to gather information about students' preferred mode of transportation to school. The following data was collected. In this example, the students are categorized by their preferred way of getting to school where each mode of transportation represents a distinct category. Therefore, the mode of transportation is categorical data. These categories might sometimes be represented by numbers or codes for convenience. For instance, yes and no can be represented as 1 and 0, but they do not have any inherent numerical meaning. The categorical data is further divided into two types, nominal and ordinal data. For nominal data, there is no natural order or ranking, for instance, One's favorite ice cream flavor or ethnicity has no meaningful order or sequence. On the other hand, ordinal data can be ranked or ordered. This means that categories within ordinal data have a natural or logical sequence. For instance, income levels can be ordered from low to high, or customer feedback ratings can be ordered from very poor to excellent. Now let's move on to the second type of data that is numerical data. Numerical data is often referred to as quantitative data because it represents quantities or measurements, for instance, the height of students, the weight of newborn babies, or the temperature outside. These are all the examples of numerical data. We can further divide numerical data into two types, discrete and continuous. Discrete data consists of countable values that cannot be subdivided. Imagine counting the number of students in a class, you can't have half a student. On the other hand, continuous data can take on any value within a range. Think of the weight of students in a class, you can measure the weight even down to fractions of a kilogram. Numerical data can be classified into two types based on their measurement scales, interval and ratio data. Both interval and ratio data have values that are ordered with consistent intervals, but the key difference lies in the zero point. Interval data lacks a true zero, whereas ratio data is characterized by a meaningful zero. Imagine this number line represents a scale for measuring something. In interval data, there is a meaningful order and numbers are evenly spaced. A common example of interval data is temperature. The difference between 10 degrees Celsius and 20 degrees Celsius is the same as the difference between 20 degrees Celsius and 30 degrees Celsius. However, zero degrees Celsius doesn't mean there's no temperature at all. It's just a point on the scale. We can have negative temperatures too. And because there's no true zero, we can't say that 40 degrees Celsius is twice as hot as 20 degrees Celsius. This means ratios don't make sense with interval data. In ratio data, there is a meaningful order, numbers are evenly spaced, and it has a true zero point. A common example of ratio data is weight. The difference between 10 kilograms and 20 kilograms is the same as the difference between 20 kilograms and 30 kilograms. 
Moreover, zero kilograms represents the absence of any weight. Since there's a true zero, we can say that 40 kilograms is twice as heavy as 20 kilograms. This makes ratios meaningful with ratio data. If you'd like to test your knowledge on this topic, be sure to check the quiz link in the description below or visit our community page. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe for more statistics content.